Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. So today you might be able to see the plant that I'm going to be talking about, which is kind of large behind me. It's not even coming fully in frame. I'll bring you a little cutting to see from this mother plant in just a moment. But today essentially we're going to be talking about Philodendron Burley Marks Variegata. And it's going to be another review video and hopefully if this is something that people like I'm testing it with two videos this week to see if this is something that people are interested in if you are then I might do more of these in the series interspersed with some other videos as well and hopefully this might be of interest so a review video the way that I'm structuring it at least is biased at least in my opinion because this is based on my experience of these plants a lot of these I've had for a few years now so I can give you a review of how this plant was when I first got it, what my experiences have been growing this plant, so a bit of background. I also will talk about uh, speed of growth, pests, availability at the time of purchasing the plant and current availability when, this fil when these videos were filmed. And again, the availability and the price is going to be vaguely kind of specific to the UK and the European market because that's where I'm based at the moment. Obviously this could dr drastically vary depending on where you are and your environment. And so yeah, I think just kind of trying to remember now it's background, speed of growth, ease of propagation is another thing that I'm going to talk about, pests, and then any kind of final thoughts. And as with all of these videos, I encourage you, if you've got this plant, write your review down in the comments below as well. It'd be great to give these videos a bit of a arena so that people can see reviews of these plants, especially if they're thinking about getting them themselves. Think along the lines of like an Amazon review. You don't have to write a whole essay if you don't want to, but your experiences with this plant could help somebody else who's trying to make up their mind on whether or not they're gonna get that plant or they've just got that plant and they want to know maybe some of the realities because essentially what I encourage with these reviews is warts and all. So talk about the good and talk about the bad as well. Like it's, it's good for people to know what they might be getting into. So without further ado, for this specific plant, let's have a look. Background in this plant. And with most of these reviews, I'll see if I can put an image of what this plant was like when I first got it and I usually have that from uh, a plant care app that I use and it's I've got a video on plant care reminder app if I'm not mistaken and it's on my channel as well and you can see if, you, if that's something that you want to maybe have a look at but also not sponsored <laughs> but um, I've actually got a cutting from this mother plant that I have been rooting out for a while and this is what the plant looked like almost mm, so there's three stems in here I would say imagine this as one stem essentially because that's what I originally got I think it was one stem maybe it was a couple and I got it from Kaylee Ellen and the rare plant shop and I've made a longer video talking about when I first got it I bought it in the winter knowing full well that there might be some delay in terms of kind of growth because obviously it was in the depth of winter as well when I got it and it was one of the first quote unquote rare plants that I've got. So I've had this plant with me for over two years now. So it's been a while and you can kind of see <laughs> that's two years of growth there. But I got it and the reality with this when I first got it is when I was getting a lot of people saying, oh, it's a very fast grower. And I'm just like, are you for real? Because nothing like it, nothing is happening on this plant. It's doing nothing and it did nothing for a good few months basically. It took a while. Again, I don't know it's because if it shocks itself because of the shipping or because it was cold. I've spoken to a few other people and they did say that similar things when they got theirs, but again, we don't know if we're experiencing the same thing because we bought it online and it arrived via the post, whether or not it was a bit of transplant shock. It The plant didn't die back. It didn't have any root rot or anything like that. It just took a moment to recenter itself <laughs> and get ready to go again. But there was a lot of variegation. I thought that this variegation when I first got it was relatively stable. It isn't. 
but it's interesting in the way that it grows. So let me see if I can bring up something so you might be able to see there. You can see the stem is really interesting because it's got, it kind of creates a bit of like an elbow. So it does a bit of a kink and then you get one leaf coming out one side. Potentially there's a couple of other unactivated leaves on the other side. They could activate, they could not activate. And depending on where your variegation sits, and I'll see if I can bring this in and you might be able to see that bit clearer on that stem there. You can, yeah, you can see the lines of where the variegation is. It depends on whether or not you're gonna get a variegated leaf or a green leaf. So let me put this down and let's talk about the big plant behind me and what happens after that. So with the plant behind me, I always get a few comments of kind of saying, there's not that much variegation and it's, it's challenging because there is variegation, for instance, on that leaf and there's a few variegated leaves on this side, but because it's so large, a lot of the variegated leaves are on the other side. I will see if I can get a picture, but the problem that I usually have with my conservatory at this time of the year, it's really badly misted windows because of the humidity in here and the temperature difference. If not, there's probably gonna be an update photo in the summer and you can see when I take a picture from the outside because this plant ain't moving. It's very, very heavy. The pot is huge. It's in terracotta and I've lost count of how many janky support sticks are supporting this. I'd say about six or seven at this point, And it's also tied up to the shelf next to it so it doesn't fall over. And that's another thing as well to know in terms of background with this. It will throw out green leaves. I don't mind because I find that it doesn't fully lose its variegation. It just might need to throw a few green leaves. If you keep taking off all the green elements of this plant and you're just leaving the variegated leaves, which a lot of people want to do, it will probably have a slightly slower growth speed. So let's talk about that. So speed of growth is something that needs to kind of be touched on with this plant. So as I briefly mentioned just a moment ago, it takes a moment for it to get going. When it does, it grows super fast. Now you might have seen the smaller plant that I was showing you. That was a cutting that I took. I went straight into pond with water reservoir straight away and it rooted quite nicely into that. I am giving it medium towards low light. That will tell you something about what that, the light that that plant is getting. And it's giving me about a leaf or two every month or two basically. So it's not particularly fast. The mother plant, which is much more established, <laughs> is growing at an alarming rate. It's growing particularly fast. This, I have to say, is possibly one of our most reliable and fastest growing philodendron in my care. But again, I will add onto this that I do leave some of the green leaves on here. And I've touched on this on other videos. If you're only leaving variegated leaves on a plant and you're not leaving any green leaves on the plant, it will be slower growth because it's less a depth of being able to photosynthesize efficiently. Makes sense. There's variegated leaves, there's less green, there's less chloroplast to create the chlorophyll for the plant to grow faster. So just bear that in mind. It's a bit of a trade-off that you will do, but in terms of speed of growth, <laughs> fast is what I would say with this plant. So that is at least what it's been like in my experience. If you can be patient with it, and I'm not, I'm not patient. I was going to say I'm not the most patient person. I'm just generally not patient. Um, just be patient <laughs> with it and it will grow and it will grow quite fast when it gets established. It will do relatively well. I, I've only got the mother plant and the plant in the pond to compare with now. I think when I had it in my arrowed mix, which is where the mother plant is, it's happier than when it is in the pond. But again, different sizes, it's much more established plant. I'm not gonna be repotting it anytime soon because I can't find a big enough terracotta pot for it at this stage. It's probably one of the biggest ones I could find and I would probably end up breaking the shelf for the weight of it. I do need to cut this down, possibly take some cuttings and propagate them and give it to friends. But, uh, but yeah, speed of growth, insane. Ease of propagation. And again, I've just touched on this briefly, but relatively easy to propagate. As in, this is a, one of the plants that I took cuttings from, again, because I was trying to prune it down a bit when I was organizing the local plant swap event. And I gave quite a few of these cuttings to friends in the local area. And as far as I'm aware, 
They've all rooted them quite easily. They're doing well in their care. And the same thing goes for my plant in Pon, which went straight into Pon, as I've just mentioned, with a water reservoir and is doing relatively well. It's not a plant that struggles too much with propagation, I don't think, at least been in my experience. And again, because of the way that the little angles are happening, you can see, let me see if I can bring up, you can see all of these are aerial roots. <laughs> and you can also see that I don't cut them. I just let them do their thing and it just looks a bit more jungly and I don't mind that. I think it looks kind of cool because these would be all the roots that would be dropping down from the plant as it's attached to a tree. Because again, and a bit, this is something I talked about previously, philodendron, it comes from a Greek sentence which means friend of a tree. So philo is friend, dendro is tree. So philodendron, you can understand if it's an epiphytic thing that grows on the side of a tree, but it's not, uh, it's not symbiotic, so it doesn't benefit the tree and the tree doesn't benefit it. It does to a certain point, but it doesn't go both ways. But it's also not, oh, I'm trying to remember what the other expression is, where it's a pest to the tree. So it works okay with each other, essentially. But it's not a, a truly two-way street, if that makes sense. Mainly because a lot of philodendrons, if they get large enough, they could potentially get big enough that they could kill the host plant at some point. But it just takes a very, very long time, even in nature, to get them to that level. So, yeah, in terms of ease of propagation, very easy in my experience. I've only ever tried them in pond. I think, from what I've seen, people have propagated them in water, in sphagnum moss. They all do relatively well. It's not a difficult one to propagate. Availability. So let's talk about availability back when I got it and now. And not an awful lot has changed. This was one of the plants that was quote unquote rare-ish. I would probably say it was a bit more uncommon even when I got it a few years back because there was a few of them coming out and based on how quickly this grows, even the variegated version of this, um, it's no surprise. So when I got it back then, it was on the high double digits here in the UK, and again, I will always say this is in the UK and European prices, and this was a couple of years ago from the filming of this video. But I have seen it recently going for less than that. I think probably about half of that or even lower than that. And it's, again, it's the ease of propagation. It kind of links into the availability of it. The more people that had it, the more people that can propagate it, the more available it is in the market. You'll find more of them and they will be cheaper. Because at that point, potentially supply outweighs the demand because there's a lot of people that need it, but if there's more than what people are searching for, then the prices will invariably go down and it will be a lot more available to find. And generally with this, you, I've seen it in more kind of boutique plant nurseries and plant stores and the pricing is about the same as what I was saying now at least. So it's become a lot more available in that respect. You can definitely find them on eBay and you can find a lot of reverted green versions of this plant. And my curiosity with that, and that might be something that I try this summer, a lot of the reverted sections of this plant that are green probably still have some variegation in the stem. So I might take some green cuttings off this plant and propagate them. And I just wanna see if I can stimulate that variegation to come back. And I encourage you, if you've got experience with this, when you're writing your own review down below, do let me know and do let everybody else know as well. I'm curious because I think this might be one that you think it's fully reverted and then you've got a green cutting, which usually go for cheaper, especially on eBay if they're reverted green. You might still get some variegation coming in and you might need to kind of encourage that to maybe take off some of the greens until that variegation comes back and it's the predominant genes on that plant and then take cutting. So it's a slightly longer game. Whether or not you want to do it, if you if the variegated version is as available as it is now and it's as affordable as it is now, I don't know. And this is again talking about the UK and Europe. The rest of the world, it might be less available, so that might be a good option for you because otherwise the full small plants of the variegated Broly Marks might be too expensive. So getting something like that, you might be able to coax it back into variegation. But as I said, don't take my word for it, I haven't tried it just yet. It'd be interesting to see if anybody else has had any experiences down below. But yeah, and the, the green version of the Burley Marks wasn't 
available generally in the UK for a very long period of time. I think when I first got this, the green version was a bit more prevalent in some of the big box stores, I think, in the States. Um, but it wasn't really a thing over here. It's only recently that I've started seeing the green version come into the plant stores, which obviously the green version in relation to the variegated version, a much, much larger plant might be the same as a three or four leaf plant, essentially, so yeah. Pests. Let's talk about pests with this one. And I will touch word. I have had no pests on this yet. And I always say yet, because it's always a matter of time with pests. And I think that's something important for a lot of people that are getting into this to get their heads around. And I know, and I can say this because I've already been through all the emotions of getting into here, and you probably will need to do the same. But for the rest of us that have been doing this for a while, pests are just a reality. It's not anything to really freak out and worry about too much. Nine times out of 10, if you catch the uh, pests early enough, and you will do if you're hovering around your plants and you're really kind of worried about them getting pests, and you deal with them fast enough, as long as you're not being too harsh with any chemicals that you're using on there, you'll control the pests. And the most you can do is control the pests in a household environment. Very rarely do you truly ever fully eradicate them. You, I don't think I've ever met anybody who was turned around and said, oh yeah, I've got rid of spider mites and I've never had them since, ever. Or I've got rid of thrips. <laughs> you can see everybody twitching in the comments with the thrips mentioned. Um, and they've never come back. That's not the case. But with this one, so far in the years that I've had it, and the same thing goes for the propagate, I have not had any pest pressures. This might be just my experience. And again, I encourage you, if you're writing your own review and you've got pests on yours, do put it down below. I said, warts and all, we need to know the good and the bad. Final thoughts. In my experience, this plant has possibly been one of the easiest philodendrons that I've ever got in my collection. It's great, and I will echo something that Kaylee Ellen said on her video a few times now. This is a great one if you're getting into the slightly more difficult to find philodendron and some variegated philodendron, but you're kind of wanting to learn as you go along. This is a great one because that you'd need to cut the green off in order to keep the variegation if that's something you want to do. It's also very easy to propagate, so you get that instant kind of sense of encouragement that, yeah, yeah, I've managed to propagate this plant and it's a bit of a rare plant. And because of its speed of growth, especially if you let it kind of do its thing, it can be quite a giving plant. I mean, this is pretty much the size of a tree at this point in the conservatory. And it's kind of cool. And the other thing as well with this is I've never had it on a moss pole. I've not had it on a plank either yet. I'm sure the leaves could get even larger if I gave them that form of support. It's only ever been on a janky support stick. But the leaves, you might get some slightly more juvenile, smaller leaves in the winter months, and that's to do more with lighting. But generally speaking, it will keep the size of the leaves. At least it's been like that in my experience. It's relatively affordable, at least in the UK and in the EU, based on those kind of price ranges that I was giving you. It's become a lot more available. I've not really had any pest pressures with this one. And I'm trying to think of anything particularly negative to say about this plant. And I'm really coming up short. It's a very cool plant if you can get it and you're kind of on the fence, I would say go for it. And in terms of a score out of 10, 10 being the highest, zero being the lowest, and again, this is my personal opinion for this plant, it would either be a nine or a 10 out of 10. It's, it's that good for me. It's been my constant. It's a constant plant and it kind of does its thing and I don't have to worry about it too much. And it's not particularly fussy about its watering and it's not particularly fussy about its lighting. And I'm not going to go into care for a lot of these plants during these review videos because I usually do have care videos on this. This is more of a review in terms of what my experience has been with this and hopefully in an attempt to help other people if they're considering getting these plants. So yeah, I'll remind you again, if you've got your own plants, like the Furlodendron Burley Marks Variegata and you want to give your own review, do drop it in the comments down below. Let's make this a thing. But yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.
Bye.